Wonder Woman 7, Legacy number 807. This is Tom King writing with Gilla March on art. I'd forgotten well, this until someone reminded me during the week and went, oh no, that's yeah. right, there's a fill-in artist and it's it's March, damn it. it, it, it but it is March, well, we're in March, it's March 20-something right now. We're, we're safe from this getting a 10, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, to, actually, to be fair, right, to be fair, yes. compared to other Gil and March art, I actually think this is a bit more restrained. It it is, but I still don't like a lot of his faces. I know that's so, fair. I still would, wouldn't say I like it, but I don't think it's yeah. as grotesque as no. I find a lot of his art. I like a lot of the big, like his layouts with the big panels where there's kind of a lot of detail, but it's not like super intricate. So like mm. when it opens up, so uh, this story starts that Wonder Woman and Superman are meeting up at this mall that's kind of at the cent- center of the galaxy. It's called the Andromeda Mall. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a space station mall, basically. Yeah, and basically it's the galaxy's biggest mall. If you can't find anything here, yeah, then there's nothing in the universe that you're looking for. Um, and so when you get these big sweeping, like, to show the vastness of this mall and the all the amount of different alien species that are shopping here at one time, I think it looks good. Um, but when we get, like, the close-ups on, on Superman and Wonder Woman when they're talking. And there's a lot of emotion in this issue. So there's a lot of back and forth in expressions. And that is not, I don't think, March's strong suit. Mm. So the book kind of suffers for it. That said, everything that King writes in this, I really, really enjoy. Uh, oh, just on the art, I was going to say it's a bit of a cruel joke to get that Sam Pierre cover and then... Yeah. Uh, open it to get to the, the Gil and March chart. It's a bit of a cruel, cruel, nasty joke. Yes. Uh, I, I'm mixed on this issue. I like the concept of it, mm-hmm. and I think there's some nice moments that come out of it, particularly the idea that, you know, the whole concept of this is that Superman and Wonder Woman are trying to buy a birthday gift for Batman, yeah. which is a little bit silly, but, you know, that's why it's a fill-in story. Mm-hmm. But it does eventually kind of become clear that it's tied in, or at least it's set in the time period that everything else is going on in, uh, because as they're talking about Batman, at a certain point, Wonder Woman realizes that Superman's actually talking about her, not, you know, asking for mm-hmm. help with all this, you know, uh, stuff going on with the government and how mm-hmm. Amazons are being hunted. And I think those little moments, I really like the idea of them coming out and it's like yeah. Superman saying, hey, you can ask for help with all this. And she's like, no, no, this is an Amazon problem. I like that. I yeah. think a lot of the other stuff in this issue um, feels a bit forced to me. I think there's some jokes that kind of work and there's some jokes that I think just feel like, okay, you're going a bit too far. It's a bit too cute. It's you a bit don't too like far. The su- you don't like the Superman dad jokes? I don't mind some of the Superman dad jokes. The problem yeah. for me is other jokes where they're trying to like think of a gift and mm-hmm. Superman... Oh. And, I, and I think this is out of character. Either if he's being serious or if he's just joking, I think either yeah. way it's out of character where Superman yeah. says, hey... How about we get him like a time travel thing so he can go back and like yeah. visit his parents before they die? And I'm like, I'm sorry. In no way, shape, or form do I believe Superman would even joke about that. Never mind actually suggest yeah. it. That said, he recovers by as they're trying to think of stuff and he drinks down his soda. And I was like, well, I know what Batman's favorite thing is, and it's in this cup, and it's just ice. And I, I had a chuckle. Sure, sure. But yeah. like, I, I think some of the, the bigger like jokes to go for, because mm-hmm. even the way that she says that that's a bad idea or whatever, yeah. uh, or like she, oh, she'll, he'll just keep you know moaning or uh, moping about his parents. Yeah. I'm like, this doesn't feel right that they're saying, oh, he mopes about his parents it's... too much. I get, I get that you're poking fun at all the Batman tropes, and it makes yeah. sense for some of those things to come out in these friends, these yeah. other characters, but some of them feel too, like, no, no, no. If you actually knew this person, you wouldn't be cracking that. You make fun of the bat stuff. You'd make fun of yeah. the fact that he broods all the time. Sure, but that's not all his, fine. Not his parents, but yeah, it's a little bit too flippant from both of them. Yeah, that are two characters that I feel should know better. Yeah, um, I mean the small details. I like. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Diana just gets like a straight black coffee, but Superman gets this ridiculous milkshake with like pink yes. cream on top. Yep. Because the way that it, me- it makes you think too, you think it's gonna go by gender roles, and the lady's gonna get the f- you know fluffy pink drink and, and whatever, and then Superman sits down and the milk shakes in front of him, and he goes, "I, I try to get you the strongest coffee they have," you know. Uh, so I do like that. Um, on-, on a more serious note, the there's a section where 
they're they're comparing themselves to one another mm-hmm. and how they see each other. And I think that's the the Tom King stuff that I really like, where they do make a perfect triangle. And that Clark's like, yeah, you know, me and me and Bruce see you as a certain way, but I know that Bruce sees me and you in a different way. Well, to be more specific, what mm-hmm. he's basically saying is is that to one of them, the other two seem alike because yep. to to Batman say he sees both Wonder Woman and Superman as being like sort of goody two shoes, like all about yep. the, the you know the, the the truth and justice. Uh, right. Whereas Wonder Woman sees Superman and Batman as both these people who were broken as children who mm-hmm. are like too stubborn in their own way about what they do. Right. And then Superman sees Wonder Woman and Batman as being both like kind of stern and like, stern uh, like warriors. You, you can sort of see how each of them see the other two as having yep. a lot in common with each other kind of thing. Yeah, and it, and it makes that, that triangle, right? And then you wonder about Trinity, you know, where it's like she is kind of that character that's, you know, in her association with their sons, you know, she is kind of all three of them wrapped into one. You know, she is the legacy of, of the Trinity. Uh, and they can't be by an accident because of how much that he's written about Trinity. So, um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, other than that, it, it's filled with, a, I don't want to call it fluff because there's a lot of little small moments I like. Like the, when, yeah, the, the small moments, but yeah, there is definitely, yeah. like, there's a, like there's a joke yeah. here that's okay where this big alien dude's like trying to buy kryptonite from this place. Because yeah. again, this mall has everything. Everything. And he's, yep. and he's arguing, like, just give me the... And the guy's like, oh, would you like a gift wrap? That'll cost you extra. <laughs> uh, yeah. That said, though, there's also, like, a lot of running jokes where it feels like Tom King's just complaining about everyday life Shopping. that he doesn't like. Uh, the, the, everything about the valet parking mm-hmm. uh, joke where Wonder Woman mm-hmm. needs to get her ticket uh, validated. Validated. Yep. Uh, that all just felt like... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, just Tom well, King's I- had an experience recently that he wants to get off his chest. <laughs> I don't know what the lead time on these books are. This felt like it was written during the Christmas shopping season and he had to go to the mall mm, yeah. and he was just writing things that were irritating him at the mall. That, 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 that makes some sense. Or maybe, maybe he didn't realize he had to have a fill-in issue. Maybe like, yeah. maybe like the next issue, which is issue eight, was originally written mm-hmm. as issue seven, but then they realized, right. oh, we're going to have to push these all back by one to give yeah. Sam Pierce some time. Maybe uh, this was was a bit more hastily written, which is why it's maybe not up to the, the standard yeah. that we're, we're typically accustomed I would, to. I, I would buy that. Um, on that, but uh, I I do like the where it goes where they they decide that they they realize that one of the things that Bruce would appreciate the most is the, the way I took it was their friendship and their bonding over looking for something for Bruce, right? Um, so they they go into a photo booth and they get a picture taken when that says Happy Birthday, you know. And that's going to be their gift. Because, like, what do you get the man that has everything? You know? And so it's and, kind of this... Uh, and they crushed on a diamond, just to be yeah, safe. Yeah, say. And then, so, they get the pictures out, and Clark's still like, I don't know if this is enough. Maybe we'll crush a coal into a diamond, and then he can, you know, do that. Uh, and he can use that. You know, it'll be a little special gift. So, uh, I like that they leave that for him. And well, then... it ties back to an idea they had earlier. We're like, oh, technically he's not a billionaire anymore. He lost a mansion. Oh, yeah, Maybe yeah, we could crush right. down a bunch of rocks and of diamonds and he could get all yeah. that back. He's like, ah, he doesn't like charity. That would be too much. Yes. Uh, so they, Except, give, they give him yeah. the photo and the diamond at the end and we see that Bruce gives the diamond to the orphanage. Uh, yep. To, you know, and all I could think was, yeah, I bet that woman that runs the orphanage is like, yeah, that's that's mine now. Yep. <laughs> that's not going to these a, rats. I, I've done enough I hope for these the kids. Next time we see her, she has this beautiful diamond necklace. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. Um, and it uh, it also ends with uh, Clark and and Diana, basically having this conversation where she's like, I don't want to ask you for help, but I, I'm going to, uh, and it's kind of a mystery, right, of what she asks him. Uh yeah yeah. Uh, also, we glossed over the whole thing where they go to the movies, which is basically oh, yeah. just a pun for a stupid joke. Which is, it says Batman fights Superman in five D, and you're like, yeah. what's five D? And then the joke is, is that it's imps because they're from the fifth dimension. It's it's just mixapidalic. Yeah. Uh, and and that that was a funny bit of of mixapidalic arguing with himself on how Superman would defeat him by making him say his name backwards. Yeah, you know. that, that, but those like because that was like three pages, and all I could think yeah. was this is this this is just padding because yep. there's not enough well, in the issue. Yeah, yep. 
Yeah, so. it definitely. So it, you know what? As a fill-in issue, there's fun moments to be had, but there's also mm-hmm. some stuff that felt really out of character to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know. You know, it kind of felt like he was trying to recreate that day issue and uh, a know, little ba- bit. You know, back in that Superman Batman stuff, and I feel like this was trying to recreate that. Uh, and there is some heart to it, but mm-hmm. too much of it just feels a little bit too cute and forced. I think for me for it to really, yeah. really land. And obviously, Gillen March's art doesn't, you know. But that's yeah. the thing. I don't think if we, if he was doing these next regular issues planned, I don't think we'd mm-hmm. be doing this story. I think this is yeah. this only exists because he realized he needed to have a fill-in. Because yeah. it says it takes place before Batman's birthday, but after issue four or five. Issue five, it said, yeah. Issue five, yeah. So, you know, before she goes off to recruit the Wonder Girls to keep them out of it, right? That was that issue? Uh... That was that was issue five. It must yeah. have been because that okay. that was the end of the issue where they revealed they, they were all going to yep. ignore and help her anyway. Because yeah. uh, in issue six was that awesome? You know, she takes on the gauntlet. Yeah, there was there was one like after that certainly. So yeah, yeah, there had, so, there had to have been after that. But uh, yeah. So but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely more of a mixed bag of an issue. Uh, there's things to like in there, but uh, that's a bit. Uh, also, Superman goes and gets uh, pedicures. Because uh, this, uh, yeah. this place has like firepower enough to like cut his nails, I guess. Yes, because usually he bites them, but Pa told him that was a bad habit, so he has to go here. Which, if you've never got a pedicure, it feels great. I'll I just that much. Again, it feels like it just it feels like if if you had one of these cute jokes, you can get yeah. away with it. But it's like an issue of these cute jokes, and it yeah. just it felt a bit you know effy. I just feel like this is Tom King telling us he's a pedicure boy <laughs> and he likes to go to the mall to get his feet rubbed, you know? So but I, I don't blame him. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a shame though. Cause this has obviously been a book for the last several months. Yeah. That's been just unanimous praise from us and just gushing about how great the art is and how good the storytelling is. Mm-hmm. This issue is, you know, it is what it is. It's a filling issue. It's just a shame we have to wait for another month to get a proper <laughs> issue out of it. But hey, yeah. it is, it is what it is. All right, that's uh, Wonder Woman. What are you rating them at? I'm going to 7.5. 6.5. Okay. Yeah, def- definitely a mixed bag for me. <laughs>